Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net. We are at ECGC 2015, the East Coast Game Conference. I'm joined by Jim Brown, Senior Designer at Epic Games. Hello, <laughs> I see everyone. And uh, we, we just came from Jim's talk about Unreal Tournament and the community and community involvement. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you brought up some interesting items that are involved in the development process. So you showed heat maps. Right. And can you explain what a heat map is and what it does for you? Right. So we actually started data tracking on Gears of War was kind of the first time that we had done that internally. And heat maps really just kind of show where people, well, you can use them in various different ways. The example I used in that particular talk, um, I had two up there, which was, one was showing where players move in a map. So it's kind of a, a top-down look at the topography of the map, and it just draws a little light, essentially, every time somebody steps someplace. Um, and so you can see, like, the path that they take as they move through the world, and then it changes color based on how many people or how often that particular spot is visited. Um, the other thing that we use them for in Gears uh, in particular was to show, uh, we just basically drop a marker whenever somebody died. Um, and so then we can go back and see how they died, who killed them, you know, all that other type of information. Um, but in Gears in particular, what we were looking for was, uh, we, we were trying to create a very specific type of gameplay that funneled people into kind of a central front in the map so that you can spawn and run in and always, the combat was always kind of maintained on that central front. Um, and by tracking player movement and player deaths, we could see when that front fell apart and then try and figure out why and how to fix it if it wasn't happening. And are, are there any particular elements in level design that you find players respond uh, almost programmatically to? Is there, if I see a set of stairs, am I expected to respond a certain way? Yeah, I mean, there's any number of elements. Um, uh, the, there's all these rules. I mean, I could spend forever talking about it. It's just about how you group objects together, you know, whether there's light in a doorway that's in a dark hallway, it'll pull people there. Um, people's mentally respond different to ramps than they do to stairs, for example, and you, just whether some place looks accessible or not um, really influences how often they move there. Um, there's very, very subtle things just in uh, the architecture of a space or nooks and crannies where people can hide that kind of give these visual cues or even um, have really dramatic outcomes to uh, uh, the way the game unfolds. Um, in Gears, for example, our camera was over behind you over your right shoulder and that led to a lot of problems looking around corners because you could swing the camera out around the right, but you couldn't do that to the left. So that really, really influenced the way that we had to build a lot of our spaces, because even just building a symmetrical space, when you flip it around, all the corners that you can look around from one side are now overbalanced because the guys on the other side can't see that. Um, so it took a lot of work to, to work through those issues. And then again, you know, in, in, in first person, like we're doing with Unreal Tournament, you know, how high the camera is, your field of view, all of that influences how the world feels when you're moving through it. Um, you have to have your scale correct, not only in in terms of like how wide is a door, but you know, are there visual cues that kind of let the player know how large they are in comparison to the world around them? I mean, it's like this really kind of cascading thing. So there's any number of ways that you could you could tackle that. So it sounds like level design, as much as it is design, is also partly a science. It, it absolutely is, and and because that's one of the reasons we really started doing a lot of the data tracking that we did and really trying to look at it more from not just a pure design perspective. A lot of design is actually about human computer interaction and understanding how people react, how people interpret, and human behavior just in general. And um, there's a lot of elements that play into that that are more complicated than just making a fun gameplay space. Very cool. So for more information, of course, Unreal Tournament is actively in development. Absolutely. Uh, can, you, can you direct people where to go for that? Sure. UnrealTournament.com. It's really easy. Um, from there, you can download the game. You can join our forums. You can get involved in the process. Uh, we're doing this whole new thing that's completely open uh, community development. So anybody can get involved just by playing, just by reading, just by participating. Or they can dive in full bore and start modeling and programming and designing and doing all the things. Uh, we want to leverage the power of everyone to really make this the best game that we possibly can.
So unrealtournament.com for more information on that. Of course, gamersnexus.net for the full article. And we will see you all next time.